not too thrilled about that bottom line. Okay, so what are we going to talk about from the, from the beginning here is, uh, well, we've got a few different topics to talk about today. Uh, Jerry, did you see in the paper this morning the, uh, the whole caning thing, of course, mm -hmm. took place uh, yesterday. The uh, Michael Fay, 17 years old, defaced a couple of cars and... Uh, it ended up getting caned yesterday. Now, you, you might agree with it, you might not agree with it. I'm sure we all have different opinions on it, uh, and I want to hear about your opinion. But uh, a, a related story, the fact that um, a woman, an American woman, well, she's, uh, she's supposed to be, was she, was she whipped or, yeah, she got 80 lashes uh, and find the equivalent of, equivalent of $5.70 in, um, in Iran. You with me on this? Basically, you know what she did? 80 lashes. Now, Michael, K Michael Fay got six uh, canes, six wax with a cane. And this uh, woman in Iran, American woman, what was her name? Let's see here. I've got it in my notes. Uh, Mary Jones. She's from Texas. She was arrested for, have you any idea what she was, was arrested for? Drunkenness. She was drunk. She was drunk uh, for drunken behavior. They never proved that she actually was drunk, but she was acting drunk. She was arrested and punished two weeks ago. Flogging is a common punishment for drinking alcohol in Iran. But uh, this was the first report in many years of uh, a Westerner actually getting flogged, they call it. So there's caning and there's flog. Lots of folks didn't know that this woman was actually getting, uh, getting flogged. Eighty lashes. So I'm thinking to myself, I don't think I want to be caned. I don't think I want to be flogged. Because were you ever hit when you grew, when you grew up? Jerry? I was. I was. You were smacked? Yeah. Did it ever become abusive? No, I don't okay. think so. I mean, right. Now, in my case, I'm not sure it was if it was abusive or not. I don't know, to tell you the truth. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. But what I'm thinking is when this lady was caned, um, was flogged, I'm sorry, in Iran, do you think that maybe they, like, the actions of the flogger matched his voice? You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you ever, ever act like a <laughs> drunk person again in, in our country, filled with people with rags on their head you will be hit just like this again and i mean it ouch <laughs> <laughs> man are you hurt. with me on this are you with me on this i'm thinking i'm thinking this lady okay she's getting whipped but i mean these guys that do the actual caning and stuff they gotta be into this if you do this for a living you you gotta like it well, supposedly, this guy who uh, flogged Michael Fay, I think it was four times he ended up with instead of six, uh, was a, a, a high, a the marsh. highest degree martial artist a that martial uh, you art. can get. I mean, well, hey, I mean, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna get hit, get hit from somebody who can who can hit you right. You know, if you're gonna get executed, get hit from. You know, if you're gonna be in the firing squad, for instance, you you don't want people missing and scaring you. You with me? Absolutely. You don't want people. Mi you don't want people like shooting like right beside your ear. Get the person that's going to get you smack dab right between the eyes. You, that's the person you want. And I'm telling you, these people like it. The people that do the caning and the uh, the whipping, they like it. I can hear. Can you hear the guy doing the caning right now? Now Singapore's kind of it's more of an Oriental uh, 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 culture. Is that right? I'm, I'm sure that's. I'm sure that's the case. Oriental martial artists, of course. This guy had a big, uh, you know, big black belt and everything, and he got up there. You know what I'm saying? He's getting ready. He's got the cane, you know, mm -hmm. ten foot long cane. He's oh, does a couple. Of, maybe he did a couple of flips. Are you with me on this? <laughs> I mean, there was. Do you think there was people watching? I, was it on telephone? Do you know? Have you any idea? Engineer, no, it engineer art. It wasn't on. It was telephone. I mean, television. It wasn't on the television. Was, but there had to be people there watching. Of course, in America, when somebody's executed, you have to have somebody there watching. When somebody's punished, I don't know what the deal is with that. But nonetheless. I can see this guy. I, I'm picturing this in my head. He's got to make it slightly entertaining, right? He's doing a couple of flips. He's doing a couple of wah, wah, wah. You know, he's making this noise. And then he's walking up and going, Shia! And he's doing the cane thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's doing it. He's got to like this. Do you think he liked it? Do you think he likes doing it? That's my question. Do you, what if you had a job like that? If you had to cane or you had to hit somebody with a whip, young man, would you be into it? Think about that for a couple minutes. I want to, I want to talk about that, and you know about the whole, uh, the whole thing with uh, President Clinton. Can we get off on this Clinton thing real quick? We just heard a uh, story at the top of the hour with ABC News. Just want to touch on a couple of quick news to, uh, things, and then we'll get into our topic for the hour. Uh, President Clinton, of course, he's being accused of an unwanted. Now, this is what the lawsuit said in Arkansas: an unwanted sexual advance. Think about that for a second: an unwanted sexual advance. Now, let me ask you a question real quick. If a, a sexual advance is unwanted or wanted, doesn't it have to be done? 
Are you with me on this? You following me so far? Uh, if a sexual advance uh, is to be wanted or unwanted, don't you have to do it first in order to find out if it's wanted or unwanted? Are you with me? You gotta find. You have to. Fi you have to find out. I have to admit, I made a sexual advance on my wife when I first met her. She asked me one day. She said, "Honey." Was it my brain that attracted, uh, attracted you to me? I said, no, honey, you, you had a great body. And I actually pointed out a few specifics. I don't think that's bad. I really don't. I, I, I pointed out that she had great, you know, mm -hmm -hmm, keep your finger on the dump button there, Engineer Hart. Uh, and she, was it my brain? No, it wasn't your brain, honey. You have a beautiful, beautiful body. It was a sexual advance. In my case, it was a wanted sexual advance. Are you with me on this? Uh, but, but how was I to know if it was a wanted or an unwanted sexual advance? That's my question for the lady this morning. Is, 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 listen, Mr. Clinton, he's a guy, he's a man. Quite frankly, I don't dig his politics, but he's a good-looking guy. My wife even says, hey, you know, he's, he's not a bad-looking guy. He's kind of buffed and he, in, in the right places, and he's kind of, he kind, of, he's kind of loose in the right places. And my wife thinks he's a good-looking guy. And I thought, well, you know, he, he's got to make the advance, whether it's wanted or unwanted. We don't know. Oh, look at we have a Jerry. Well, let me. Can we go to the phone? Well, okay, you know what I got to do? I got Jerry on the line here, so I want to go to the phone. I got another topic I want to get to just real quick in a minute with this whole thing. But let's get to the caning thing. Jerry in Westwood. Do I punch him up right there? Perfect. Right, Jerry. What's going on? You are on seven ten talk. What's got? Huh? Yeah, I'd love to be caning people. You'd love to do the caning thing? Are you a sick human being? Wear a hood. Really? Yeah. You into hoods? You into like black clothing and stuff like that? Sure, they wear a hood because you know they don't want no one to know who they are because. In Singapore, they'd probably be walking around. There'd be a lot of angry people that would like to, you know, cane them. Have you ever hit anyone in your life, Jerry? Yes, I have. Did you get joy out of it? Yeah, especially when the whip hits the flesh. Really? It's, you know that sound it makes? Well, not a whip. I use the whip, but I guess... You use a whip, do you? Hey, Jerry, let me ask you a question real quick. Did you hear that pop this morning? No. You know what I'm talking about? The pop? Yeah, no, the I pop didn't. that should have happened when you pulled your head from between your legs. Come on, Jerry! I can't believe you'd want this. I can't believe you'd be into caning somebody. That's disgusting. You'd probably make an entertainment event, wouldn't you? Little white butt would be so red. Oh, my God. I can't. Little white. Listen, this guy's sick. Jerry, how old are you? What's it to you? Oh, pfft, not much, believe me. Goodbye, Jerry. Thanks for calling 710 Talk. It is uh, 13 minutes after 1 o'clock. Oh, God, there's a lot of sick people in this world, don't you think? I didn't mean that they'd uh, take it as a, uh, as a, uh, a sexual thing. That's what he sounded like. Jerry sounded like he was doing the sexual thing. Nonetheless, uh, I, I still think that the caning people and whatnot, they had to like the lashing people kind of get yourself back here to Iran and behave yourself. I think that that really happens. Nonetheless, Jerry, whew, get some help, brother. There's uh, lots of therapy available. All right. So, Mr. Clinton, let's talk about this Gates thing real quick. Just one more quick little news thing, and then we're going to get into our topic of the hour. Chief Gates, a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people do. I dig him. I like him a lot. I think he's a good guy. He might have to shell out some cash, friends. Now, he's been sued in the past many, many times, punitive damages and whatnot. He's lost three times, multi-million dollars. He's lost three times. Now, the whole time, the city of L.A. has paid the punitive damages that he lost. Well, now he's a private citizen. The question is, if he is held liable for these punitive damages, is he going to have to pay, or will the city still pay for him? Now, he admits he doesn't have a good relationship with the L.A. City Council. Are you with me on this? So chances are he's going to have to pay. Here's the deal. Have you ever had a bill that you're really, really, you don't think you should have to pay? Are you, 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 you order cable. For, let's say you order cable. All right? The cable never comes into your house. All right? You're there for three days. You're paying the bill. Okay, three days. You finally say... I've had it with this cable company. They said they were going to be here on Friday. It's now Monday. I don't have cable yet. I'm not paying the bill. Chief Gates, don't pay the bill. Don't pay it, Chief. That's all there is to it. What are they going to do? I say what you do, Chief, if you're listening right now. Take all your money. Put it into a Swiss bank account. I'll do it for you. Bring it over here. I'll swing to Switzerland real quick. We'll drop it into account. No, you'll ever see it. Don't pay the punitive damages. If you are held liable for them, there's a little advice for you. All right, there's the news items for uh, today. A few uh, few moments of news: the caning, the uh, Clinton thing, and the uh, Gates don't pay the bill thing. And we'll be back. Our topic that I want to talk about this hour is well, where did I get it? Right here. When was the last time you gave money to a bum? When was the last? When was the last time you gave money to a bum? 
We're going to talk about that coming up. But weather-wise, let's have a look real quick. It's going to be a 50% chance of rain through the night tonight, well into the weekend, as a matter of fact. Lows in the 50s at the, uh, at the, uh, um, at the 40s at the beach, 50s inland. There you have it. It is 15 minutes after 1 o'clock. I'm David Jeremiah. You're tuned to 710 Talk, the new talk station. You're listening to a live, uncensored, on-air audition for talk show host positions on the new 710 Talk. If you like what you hear, call in and contribute to the show. If you don't like what you're hearing, remember, you're listening to an audition. Our regular weekday lineup starts next Monday morning. Stay tuned for details here on 710 Talk, the new talk station. Hey, George, what's with the 18-wheeler? I'm heading over to Pizza Hut. They've got an unbelievable new deal. Really? Yeah. Their special prices are so low, I think Pizza Hut's gone loopy. Wow! Yeah, now you can get two medium pizzas with your choice of any two toppings for just $7.99. No, $7.99? That's incredible! Yeah, and it's not just any ordinary pizza. It's Pizza Hut pizza. But, George, Pizza Hut delivers. Why don't you just give them a call? I know, but it's a limited time offer and only good for carry. Out. That's why I got this baby. You can't get enough of a good thing, you know? Now, for a limited time at participating Pizza Hut restaurants, get two medium pizzas covered with your choice of any two of your favorite toppings for just $7.99. Offer good on carryout only, not valid with Bigfoot half price pizza or any other offer. A uh, truck not included. We only have 342. That's right, sit and sleep. Your mattress superstore has only 342 just discontinued top-of-the-line 1993 Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Spring Air, and Springwall chiropractic mattresses. Now, these mattresses are in stock now and absolutely must be sold. We've slashed our prices on these mattress sets to the bare bone. I guarantee no one in Southern California can beat our prices. Remember, you don't have to drive to sit and sleep. Use our shop-by-phone service, and we'll deliver your mattress to you. This is a once-a-year offer on these few remaining mattress sets. As always, your comfort is guaranteed with our 30-night sleep trial. And you'll receive a free four-hour local delivery, setup, and old mattress removal. If you're within the sound of my voice, we want your business. We'll beat anyone's advertised price on your mattress is free. Call 1-800-675-3536. That's 1-800-675-3536. Or visit Sit and Sleep in Culver City at Overland between Venice and Washington. Sit and Sleep is your mattress superstore. The title fight, where one punch can take you from champ to chump in the time it takes to hit the canvas. Now all you can think about is getting that belt back. It's about country and family and honor. It's about revenge. Revenge, the rematches. See five title fights in one night, May 7th at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. Call Ticketmaster now, because winning is grand. But revenge is sweet. See Frankie Randall in his first defense of the WBC Super Lightweight title face former champ Julio Cesar Chavez. Simon Brown defends his title against terrible Terry Norris. Gerald McClellan takes on Julian the Hawk Jackson. Azuma Nelson fights Jesse James Leha. Plus, Ricardo Lopez battles Kerman Guardia. Fight fans will be talking about this night for years. Seats will be going fast, so don't miss it. Revenge the rematches. See five title fights May 7th at the MGM Grand Garden. Stay tuned to this station for more information. Hello, Joe. You are on 710 Talk. I, 710 is a big breath of fresh air, and uh, you uh, auditioners are doing a better job, I think, than uh, a lot of other people's uh, permanent Thanks. Uh, host, so well, that's because they're, they're not human beings. They're radio automatrons. They don't care about you and your needs. Nobody cares about you like <laughs> 710 Talk. 710 Talk. 710 Talk, the new talk station. Good afternoon. Now back to your host, David Jeremiah. If I could just turn my microphone on, it'll be all set. 19 minutes after 1 o'clock. Good afternoon. Thanks so much to uh, Engineer Art and Screener Bernard for their wonderful job this afternoon. Jerry Hawkins, of course, uh, being the booth announcer. We were talking last uh, few minutes about uh, a few different hot topics in the news. One of them, the caning. Brought up the fact that maybe the uh, caning and the people that do the caning and the people that do the whipping, the Iranian whipping, uh, maybe they like it. Who knows? What did uh, Michael Caine, or what did Michael Fay get caned for? Do you know? Well, here's the deal. He spray painted a couple of Mercedes Benz. Now you say, well, that Mr. Clinton, President Clinton came out this morning saying the caning of this American boy was just too much of a mistake. We called it a mistake. Flat out mistake. That was, was his words. 
Well, Mr. Clinton, the Mercedes-Benz, I know the one that you're driving probably, is worth, you know, however many millions of dollars it's worth, simply because of all the bulletproof glass and all the bulletproof situations that you need to be in. But nonetheless, the normal, the regular, just, you know, a little Mercedes-Benz, a baby Benz, is worth a quarter of a million dollars in Singapore, $250,000 for a car that you can buy over here in America for $60,000, you can buy over in Europe for thirty dollars to $40,000. Well, Mercedes-Benz, he, he, he spray-painted two of them at $250,000 a piece. That's a half million dollars. That's a half million dollars that he was messing with. 17-year-old. I say cane him. I say cane away. I want to talk to uh, Mark on a car phone. By the way, the phone number, 1-800-4-710-710. 1-800-4-710-710. It's 120, and we'll talk to Mark. What's up, bud? You know, David, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I don't care if it's a Ford Pinto. I'm really getting sick and tired of the lack of justice we have in this country. I'm looking for immediate justice. How long did it take for them to do this? A few months? Yeah, it was a few months. He's got his justice already. No long court stays, no, no um, attorneys getting involved. And I'm getting so tired of walking out in my neighborhood and seeing graffiti all over the place and paying taxes and wasting money to live in this Hellhole. Where do you live, Mark? I'm in the valley. In the valley. Yeah. Lots of graffiti, lots of gangs coming up. You know, I was talking to my, my son the other day. I have a 10 year old son. And uh, he started worrying. Do you have kids, Benny? Any yeah, chance? Three year old. Three year old? Three year old dog. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. Sorry about that. Uh, Ten year old, my son, he asked me the other day, he said, Dad, I'm afraid of gangs. Yeah, absolutely. You... I'm afraid to send my kid to school out here. I grew up out here, and it was wonderful. And How... now I just want to get out. How old are you? I'm 33. You're 33. I'm 34 years old. Did you ever have to mess with gang problems when you were in school? Oh, the worst thing we had was maybe making hash pipes in metal shops. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And uh, I, 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 the worst thing I ever saw in high school was uh, one of the bullies uh, sniffing glue in the hallway. That was the worst thing I ever saw. Yeah, and the guy got uh, not just detention, he probably got uh, suspension for that. Oh, he was gone. He was gone in a matter of... I'm just tired of it, yeah. I guess. I'm, I'm not a caner. I'm not like your last caller. I'm not a, a sadist. I just want something done. Could you beat that guy? A little sadomasochism? Oh, boy, oh, Bob, hey, you. everybody calls in to talk shows. There are some weird people in this world. <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks for your call. Really appreciate it. You're on a car phone. Uh, what kind of car are you driving? Uh, I'm driving a Cadillac. Yeah, you're making your payments on it? I'm doing my best. Well, yeah, all right. Then you're working every day? Every day. Working hard? Yeah, very hard. Keeping a good attitude? Yeah. Keep it up, man. You won't get caned if you do all that. Thanks a lot, David. See you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right, take it easy, Mark. Appreciate the call. 22 minutes after 1 o'clock now. It's, uh, uh, well, it's a situation now we can talk with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Frank wants to talk about the bumps. Frank, do me a favor and hang on the line for a second because I want to. Uh, I do want to talk about our subject for this hour, and that is, when was the last time you gave money to a bum? Now I realize the term politically incorrect, bum. It's politically incorrect. I, I appreciate that. Now, what would you call it, Jerry? What would you call the uh, the uh, p- p- politically correct term for a bum? For what mm. we used to call bum? Monetarily deprived. How about homeless? <laughs> How about homeless? Okay. Now, let me make it the art. You got your microphone on in there, buddy? Engineer, yeah. engineer art. Do me a favor, okay? I don't believe for a minute that there's any such thing as a homeless person. I don't buy it for a second that there's a homeless person. I say they're bums. So do me a favor. You have the dump button in there, right? Mm-hmm, that's right. That's the bleeper. If you say something wrong, a cuss word that's or right. anything that's like correct. that. If I say, the, can you do this for me? If I say the word homeless at all, would you dump on it for me? Sure. Good. Now pay close attention. This is going to require you to pay very, very close attention. Should we do a practice run? Sure. Okay. I'm going to say this. Yesterday I saw a blank person, okay? I'm going to use the word homeless. Yesterday, I... Did it dump? Did it work? See, okay, so now you won't... You'll never hear me say the word homeless because, quite frankly, I don't believe there are homeless people. I think bums. I think beggars. And let's talk to uh, Frank on a car phone. Frank is on that line right there, just learning the phone. So there it is. Frank, you with me? Hello. How you doing, Frank? I'm not on a car phone. I'm on a regular phone. Well, well cordless phone. All right, then. Some of us can't afford it. Sounds very phones. professional. Have you been on radio before? Uh, this is my second day on the air. But you sound like you've got a professional radio. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm really lying. Uh, I spent a little time on, on, on the radio before, but uh, yeah, thanks for your uh, your comment. Huh? What stations? No, they were. They all suck compared to this one. Believe me. Um, well, you're, you're very good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You got a good voice. Thank you. But your facts are a little bit wrong. Tell me why. Well, you're saying things like you said. President Clinton said this today, and this happened today, and the guy got four canings, uh, six canings, when he only got four. Oh, okay, I, I messed up. Yeah. Okay. So you got to be real careful. Sorry about that. But Did I throw your day off? 
Well, I just, you know, you're, you got a good voice, but your facts are wrong. I, I have a good voice, irritating. but what you're saying is I have a good voice, but I have no brain. Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Fair enough. I can accept that. That's not a problem. Hey, Frank, do me a, do me a favor. Do you, do you, now, talk to me about the bums real quick. Do you ever give money to bums? Uh, never. Never? Tell me why. Well, because they're an irritant. Uh, they, they're, they come up and harass you. Um, Have you been harassed, seriously? Sure. In what way? Well, you know, you go shopping or you're walking down the street, and they come up and they start bothering you, and it's a bit intimidating. You don't know them. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine uh, didn't know one of these bums, and the bum took a swing at him. Is that a fact? Yeah, almost hit him. I'll be and, doing. Uh, so some of them are dangerous. Mm -hmm. One person had acid thrown in their face. Now, I was I stopped at an Arco one morning, uh, driving into work one day at 2.30 uh, in the morning. Stopped at an Arco. And uh, as I was walking from the uh, pay point, you know, where you pay for your gas, and then walking out to the pump, right? A, uh, uh, a man followed me to the pump right on my heels. Sure. And he kept saying all the way, come on, man, come on, man, come on, man, come on. Give me money, man, give me money. I turned around and I pointed him right in the face. Right in the face. I pointed right at him. I said, get the beep away from me. How big a guy are you? I don't think you'd want to mess with me. Jerry, can you confirm this? He's big. Okay. <laughs> uh, yesterday, the phrase was 280 pounds uh, of love. Oh, really? Yeah, fair enough. 280 like pounds. a Rush Limbaugh type. Uh, he, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thanks for your call, Frank. Calling from Burbank. Appreciate it. 1-800-4710-710. 1-800-4710-710. Dial that number if you can get past our screener. Screener Bernard and uh, get past me. We'll give you 50,000 watts to tell uh, Southern California exactly what you like. It's uh, 27 minutes after 1 o'clock. Mario. Mario calling from Anaheim. Mario, how are you? Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You calling from Anaheim? Yes. I think, first of all, I just want to say you're doing an excellent job. I hope you get the, the this spot, you know. Thank you. Now everybody's going to say, oh, you're one of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not true. I don't know him. Go ahead, Mario. I What's up? I want to talk about that, uh, I, that lady in Iran that got uh, caned 80 times, I believe. Yeah, she got 80 lashes. That is so beautiful. I personally like to whip her ass, too, you know. <clears throat> You'd like to beat her? Did, did we uh, dump him? No, we didn't. Okay, he can say uh, ass if he wants to. Uh, Mario, um, how many lashes do you think uh, somebody should get for, let's say, prostitution? Did he blow? Oh, he took off. Okay. Thanks, Mario. Next time we'll teach Mario how to stay on the line. <laughs> uh, 80 lashes for acting drunk in public. Now, apparently, she was just acting drunk, and she got the uh, the lashes, nonetheless. Let's go back to our... Uh, to, we're jumping all over the place here. We need to get back to the, uh, the whole... Let's say again. Oh, we got to go to break? Oh, okay. I just got the word we're going to break. Do that right now? Okay, let's do that. All right. We'll get back to your uh, phone calls. Uh, this call is free, of course. 1-800-4710-710. Get past Bernard. Get past me. And it's all yours. I'm David Jeremiah. 28 minutes after 1 o'clock. You're listening to 710 Talk, the new talk station. You're listening to a live, uncensored, on-air audition for talk show host positions on the new 710 Talk. If you like what you hear, call in and contribute to the show. If you don't like what you're hearing, remember, you're listening to an audition. Our regular weekday lineup starts next Monday morning. Stay tuned for details here on 710 Talk, the new talk station. Ever been a little disappointed in a book the cover claimed was sizzling? A performance billed as boffo? A movie called a blockbuster? Or a menu item described as savory or fluffy? How about palatial accommodations? Luxurious seating? Expansive leg room? Or something extra large, extra small, extra soft, extra dry, extra light, extra, extra, extra? Ever been let down by exquisite, handcrafted, rugged, waterproof, scratch-resistant, self-winding, self-rotating, self-cleaning? Or that old holiday favorite, easy to assemble? It's true. A lot of things don't turn out to be as good as you've heard. But here's something that is. A Washington apple. Red delicious, golden delicious, Granny Smith. Doesn't matter. Every one sounds just like this. Kind of a built-in adjective. Washington apples. They're as good as you've heard. If you've ever looked for a reason to order Breath Assure, get ready for an offer you can't refuse. Breath Assure is launching their brand new single-use packs. So, whenever you eat garlic or onions or any food that gives you bad breath, rip open a pack and your bad breath is gone. Breath Assure is 100% natural. Tiny capsules made from parsley seed and sunflower oil give you natural, clean breath that lasts and lasts. It's not a candy, gum, or mint. There's no minty mask, just clean breath. Take one before you go to sleep and Breath Assure fights morning breath. Now, here's the offer. It's only $19.95 plus shipping and handling for four packs of Breath Assure. If you order right now, you'll also get 10 packs of Breath Assure's new single-use packs 
absolutely free. Now here's the new toll-free number exclusively for the free single-use pack offer. Call right now, 1-800-537-5100. That's 800-537-5100. With a money-back guarantee, that number, 1-800-537-5100. Hello, this is Billy Sample. The Angels coming off back-to-back -back victories continue the 11-game homestand in Game 2 of the four-game series against Oakland. Join Bob Star and me for the coverage beginning at 6.30 this evening with Angels warm-up right here on 710 Talk. Coming soon to 710 Talk. Hi, I'm Peter Tilden. And I'm Tracy Miller. You know, you should listen to us mornings on the new 710 Talk, because on the other stations, they're just loud people, obnoxious people, sick people. Then you can get that all, like, right here. Why? Just search around. The Peter Tilden Show with Tracy Miller. We'll give you everything you need to know during the day. I'm lying, but, you know. Coming Monday to 710 Talk. We are the hottest morning team in L.A., right, Tracy? We sizzle, Peter. Feel my head. Don't touch that dial. You're listening to 710 Talk, the new talk station. Back to your host, David Jeremiah. And a good afternoon. It is uh, 1.31 on a Friday afternoon. A nice Friday if you like a little bit of clouds in the sky. 50% chance of rain continuing through the night. Lows in the 50s, inland 40s at the beach. Rain on and off throughout the weekend. We're talking about bums. Bums. I'm going to say the word, Art, don't dump me on this one, bud. I'm going to go ahead and say the word homeless people, just, you know, so we can get the politically correct people to start calling in at 1-800-4710-710. 1-800-4710-710, that is the phone number. I say they're bums. Jerry and I were talking before we got in here, and Jerry, you're kind of a little bit of a, uh, well, you're kind of a little bit of a bleeding heart when it comes to this whole bum homeless thing. Art, whenever, dump he, me quick. whenever, he, whenever he uses that bleeding heart term, could you dump him there, yeah, too, please? Fine. Yeah, fine. No I am not a bleeding heart, David. Jerry, Thank I'm you very much. I'm telling you, Jerry, now, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to argue with you on this, but I got to admit, you're a little soft when it comes to bums. I simply made the point that it would give me great pleasure in my heart to be able to afford the time and the money to go out and take a bum off the street, take him in for a week or a month, get him some nice clean clothes, yeah, give good. him a couple yeah. of square yeah. meals yeah. every day, yeah. 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 give him a little cash and send him on his way. Now, am I... Hey, Jerry, Jerry. Wait, 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 wait. Right. I don't think I'm a bleeding heart liberal just because I want to do a good deed and try to give a guy who maybe doesn't have the wherewithal to get money yeah, together, yeah, to get ahead. a job together, to how much money to, are you going to give? To drag himself how out. How much money are you going to give? I simply want to be able to do a good, how a good deed. How much money are you going to give him? Now, I am smart enough to know, David, that he'll probably take that money I give him and go out and spend it on wine or drugs or whatever it is. Give that, him $1,000. Maybe, maybe they won't. Who knows? Give him $1,000. Spend $1,000 on wine. Won't spend it on food. Okay. He'll spend it on that wine, cigarettes, drugs. All right. All right. You would granted. I'll, I'll give you that. Oh, you may, here, why don't you go ahead? You just do give the, me your solution. Just do the experiment. You give it your best shot. Danny, you're on a car phone. What's up, bud? You're on seven ten. Talk. Talk to me. Hey, how's it going, David? I'm doing all right. What's hey, going on with I you? I got a solution. Instead of them standing on the off ramps holding their sign, we'll work for food, man. How about standing in front of Home Depot where they just might get a job? Oh, think of a see. There's a little, there's a solution, Jerry. You have a problem with that? I got a problem with that. I know a lot of people with college degrees that can't get hired for a job. What makes you think an employer is going to be no, enticed to hire a guy who shows deal. up? No, no, don't get because now you're going to get into a whole different thing here of making jobs available, shipping the people out of the country that don't deserve the jobs that don't belong here in the first place, and then giving the jobs to the people that want them. The people that are standing on the street corners, maybe with a couple of kids that don't want to be, uh, that don't want to be there. I say they want. I, I say for the most part, Danny. I think you'll go along. With me. Do, you, do you agree that if there's somebody standing on an off ramp, they've got the sign, "We'll work for food, we'll work for money, whatever." Uh, do they want to be there? Or do they not want to be there? You tell me. Oh, they want to be there. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying they want to be. They want to be there because they don't want to work hard like you and like me, Danny. What do you do for a living? Pipeline contractor. And, see, a guy who who works with his body works hard with his body. Now, Danny, uh, where do you work mostly? What's that? Where do you work mostly? South Oaks area, and listen to you on that Ventura State. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So listen to this. Let me ask you a question. You, do you drive a car? Yes, I do. You drive a truck, let's say? I got a truck and a car. You making your payments on it? Uh, yeah, I'm the one that's not paid for. Okay, fair enough. So you drive down to L.A., for the most part, that's where you're going to see most of the people standing on the side of the roads, uh, and you see somebody with a sign that says, we'll work for food, uh, God bless you, give me money. What do you do? I just try and look the other way and keep my mouth shut. No, that's not the thing to do. You look back at them, Danny, and you say, no, even if they don't ask you for it. Well, in a sense, they are asking you for it. You look back at them next time, Danny. You're going to feel good if you do this. You look back and you say, no. 
I'm going to try it. Give it your best shot, okay, buddy? Right. Hey, good luck, huh? Thank you, sir. All yours. It's uh, 135 now, 1-800-4-710-710. 1-800-4-710-710. I say there's no such thing as a homeless person. Now, I-, I agree that there are people that stand on the side of the road with kids tearing my heart out. I got a couple kids at home. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. And you know why I'm not in that situation? Because I work. Because I pay my bills. Because I don't stand on the side of the road and ask for money. I got a couple of kids, of course, and these people, these kids that I see on the side of the road, yeah, I don't want them in that situation. And, and quite frankly, once in a while, I look and I say, yeah, I want to take you out of this. Here, come with me. And yeah, I got a little bit of a bleeding heart for the kids. Not for the parents at all. One time I get, I did, I got to admit, Jerry, I did give a man, one time I did give him 35 cents. Do you know why? Why? Because of his presentation. His presentation was beautiful. It was beautiful. He walked up to me. I was walking out of uh, a restaurant in downtown L.A. And uh, you know when you walk out of a restaurant in downtown L.A., you're going to get hit up. You're going to get hit up by the bums. That's all there is to it. You plan on it. Plan on having your money in your pocket and know that if, like, you're holding a styrofoam uh, uh, doggy box or doggy bag, whatever, that somebody's going to ask you for it. Somebody's going to ask you for some cash. And you have to make the decision whether you want to be a nice guy or not a nice guy. Well, I'm a nice guy, and I don't give money out normally. One gentleman walked up to me. After I had just turned down another one, I just looked at him and said, no. He walked up to me and he said, look at me, man. I'm out looking for a job. Check out my tennis shoes. So I did. I gave him the time of day. I checked out his tennis shoes. He had fairly new Reeboks on. I don't know if he paid for them. I don't know if he bought them. Maybe picked them up at the five-finger discount. But nonetheless, he was looking good. He had nice Reeboks on. He had himself a a nylon uh, workout outfit on. The guy looked good. He said, look at me, man. He said, I'm dressed good, I'm going out, I'm looking for gigs, I need some money. Do you know, I reached into my pocket and I grabbed two, I had $2 in my pocket. I reached out and I gave it to him. And then the other one that had asked me just before him walked up and said, Hey man, what's the story? I asked you first. I said, yeah, and I didn't like your presentation. I said, I liked this man's presentation. Shook his hand and... Then how did you feel about yourself when you drove away and realized that the contribution you had just made was going toward a bottle of Thunderbird? I didn't. No, it didn't. He was buying more nice clothing. It's, uh... Tw- yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. I can turn your microphone off, you know. It's 22 minutes now before 2 o'clock. I have a deal with, uh, with Engineer Art to just flip your microphone off whenever you get too flippant. It's uh, 22 minutes before 2 o'clock. Uh, Shelby from Burbank. What's up? Hey. Hey. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'm You're on 710 Talk. Me. Speak to me. Say again. Sorry? Go ahead. Not necessarily a homeless person, yeah. but there are some people who have called me a bum. Why is that? Uh, well, I think I mean I'm dressed in overalls and I have work boots on, and uh, but I'll I'll do something for a buck. I'll sing for a dollar anytime. No, it says on my screen here that you uh, you're a street performer who performs for money. Yeah. How successful have you been? Well, uh, you know, it comes and goes. Sometimes. Uh, Sometimes you get pretty good money, and then sometimes you don't. Are you a good singer? Yeah, I'll come down there and sing for you. <laughs> Let's sing over the phone. Let's hear it. I know I love you like I do. Get you, I'm reaching to my pockets right now, Shelby. I really am. I'm telling this guy money. I tell you, if you were standing right here, if you were standing right here, man, you would be filled with cash. I'll tap dance, too, for money. You, you'll tap dance? Yeah, don't you think that's better than just standing there and asking? You for bet it? your bottom dollar. But Shelby, see, I don't, I, I love watching street performers. You ever gone to the uh, L.A. Street Performers Festival? No, I haven't. Oh, you've got to. These are talented people. These are talented folks out making a living. They're not standing there with signs saying, "Please give me. I'm going to do nothing." That's right. They're saying, "I'm going to do my thing. If you like it, drop some cash in there." And I've there seen some go. great, great, you give great. Money to buskers. What's that? Do you give money to buskers? What's a busker? I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a street performer. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, absolutely, I give money to street performer. You ever been to the Hollywood Bowl? Uh, well, yeah, one. The dude sitting underneath the uh, the uh, the walkway, the walkway that goes underneath the re- road that goes up into the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, okay, so he's like a regular guy. There's a guy that's there all the time. He's a, yeah. he's he's about he's old. He's about 65, and he plays the saxophone. Just makes you weep every time you listen to it. I load that guy with cash. Yeah. Well, the guy is working for a living. He's not asking for something free. He's working for a living, if you ask me. I'm and I have no problem. If you like it. Here's some money. That's yeah, exactly that's exactly the situation. Exactly the situation. Thanks for your call. Shelby sure appreciate it. Twenty minutes now before hey. two o'clock. I've got to keep this topic going because the phones are hot right now. One eight hundred four seven ten seven ten. One eight hundred four seven ten seven ten. Two little tiny lines open. Give us a call. And I want to talk about the last time you gave money to a bum. Why did you do it? 
How'd you feel about it? I'm David Jeremiah. 710 Talk, the new talk station. You're listening to a live, uncensored, on-air audition for talk show host positions on the new 710 Talk. If you like what you hear, call in and contribute to the show. If you don't like what you're hearing, remember, you're listening to an audition. Our regular weekday lineup starts next Monday morning. Stay tuned for details here on 710 Talk, the new talk station. Bird, what's the big idea? What are you talking about, Mel? You took my eyeglasses after the meeting. I did not. Bert, those are my new $150 glasses. Mel, these are my glasses, and they were just $39 at Freeman Lens. $39? But they're exactly like mine. Mel, your $150 glasses are on top of your head. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have called security. At Freeman Lens, quality eyeglasses are up to 60% less. Choose from over 500 fashion line frames. Just $39 complete. Frame with with single vision lenses. Plus, you'll save on bifocals, designer frames, even options like tinting. Excuse me, somebody up here calls security? My mistake, Frank. Hey, you've also got the same glasses as me. $39 at Freeman Lens, right? Well... You believe some people pay $150 for the same glasses? Yeah, you believe that, Mel? Shut up, Bert. Come into Freeman Lens and get $10 off your second pair of glasses. Same prescription, same visit. For the store nearest you, call 1-800-GLASSES. That's 1-800-GLASSES. How many of you like to talk about auto insurance? Probably not too many. Let's face it, it's something you have to deal with, though. Well, let's talk about it for a minute because we have a company that will change your attitude. Auto insurance specialists. By calling 1-800-772-4AIS, you'll be talking to a qualified, service-oriented company with over 25 years' experience. AIS issues policies that are right for you. AIS works with over 30 companies to find you the lowest rate possible. Now is the time to ask yourself a couple of questions. One, are you paying too much for auto insurance? Are you paying for coverage that you don't really need? Does your agent work hard to find you a rate when it's time to renew? Well, AIS will assist you well and do the best they can to get you the lowest rate possible. Do yourself a favor. Call AIS now at 1-800-772-4AIS. If you don't, you deserve to pay high rates. Call AIS at 1-800-772-4AIS. The Rams have a big Sunday planned for you, and there isn't even a game. It's Select the Seat Day at Anaheim Stadium, Sunday, May 15th. Find yourself a good season seat and have a great time. It's your chance to get free autographs from Rams players and cheerleaders. There's a free hot dog and Coca-Cola for everyone. A locker room tour. Field goal kicking contest. Plenty of prizes all afternoon with the opportunity to win a fabulous trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. You'll be back for more fun and games when the Rams battle the best in the NFL, including the Raiders, Saints, 49ers, Giants, Broncos, and more. Parking and admission are free, so don't miss Ram select a seat day. Sunday, May 15th from noon to 5 p.m. at Anaheim Stadium. It's a good time to get your seats while you have a good time. For more information or to have first shot at the best seats, call 1-800-2-GO-RAMS. It's Sunday, May 15th from noon to 5 at Anaheim Stadium. Call 1-800-246-7267. Call now. Hello, Joe. You are on 710 Talk. I, 710 is a big breath of fresh air, and... Uh, you uh, auditioners are doing a better job, I think, than uh, a lot of other people's uh, permanent Thanks. Uh, host, so well, that's because they're, they're not human beings. They're radio automatrons. They don't care about you and your needs. Nobody cares about you like <laughs> 710 Talk. 710 Talk. 710 Talk, the new talk station. Now back to your host, David Jeremiah. It's 144, 16 minutes now before 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon that uh, gives us a 50% chance of rain continuing through the night. Low temperature in the 50s, inland 40s at the beach, rain on and off throughout the weekend. Uh, just uh, a reminder for you, 710 Talk, the real lineup begins Monday morning, 6 o'clock on the new talk station, 710 Talk. Here, Tom Likas today at 3 o'clock. Don't forget that. What a breath of fresh air Likas is to have uh, yeah. in Southern California. 1-800-4-710-710. 1-800-4-710-710. The topic uh, this time around, still dealing with that whole... Uh, the whole bum situation, and Jerry gets a little upset with me when I use the word bum, and I've also uh, asked uh, Engineer Art, Art, if you hear me say the word homeless, dump me. Dump me away. You'll hear the little baby, baby, baby thing. That means that I, by mistake, said the word homeless. I don't think there is any such thing as a homeless person. Uh, I, <laughs> sorry. See, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Art. Thank you. See, I don't think there's any th such thing as a person who's standing out on the street begging for money that's not a bum. How's that? Thank you, Art. I say that they're bums and they want to be there for the most part. Well, for 100% of the time. I've never seen a person standing on the side of the road that I couldn't have said, hey, do you want help? Here, get in the car. We'll go get help. 
take them over to the Union Rescue Mission, take them over to the Fred Jordan Mission. God knows there's enough missions here in Los Angeles that people can get help. Now, the other day, I was coming out of the restaurant in uh, downtown L.A. Yes, I do eat a lot in downtown L.A., obviously. It's like the third time I've said that this hour. Coming out of the restaurant, and uh, one man asked me, have you got any spare change? Well, number one, there's no such thing as spare change. He was dressed bad, and he wanted his money, so I said to him, uh, I have a little experiment. He said, what is that? I said, why don't you and I go ahead back in? You and I will have breakfast together. How does that work? He said, I don't want your food, man. He says, I want your money. I said, well, I don't have any money to give you. Can I help you in another way? Can I give you some? Can, can we go down to the rescue mission together? I'll drop you off. I'll go see the president of the rescue mission myself. Say, here, I got this guy at the corner of Ninth and Figueroa. He's not doing well. He needs help. He says, no, man, I don't want that. I said, well, what do you want? He says, I want your cash. Obviously, the man just wanted a little bit of money to go down and get some more wine or cigarettes or whatever, just the sustenance to keep him alive on the streets. And I'm, I'm telling you that in my experience, these people, they're not homeless. They are there by choice. They are bums, bottom line. I don't mind somebody walking up playing a guitar on the street for me, and, and I'll give them some money any time. That's, that, that's not a problem. I don't want your food, is what he said. Look me right back in the eye. And he said, I don't want your food. I don't want your food. You know what I think we should do? For Thanksgiving, you know how the missions all get together and they do the Thanksgiving thing? They get the turkey and the potatoes and the, you know, the gravy and everybody gets together and it's a real feel-good, do-good thing to start feeding all the bums on the street and all the bums come in and, and they, so it's just a really nice, feely good, touchy-feely time. Why don't we stand them all up in front of a table full of beer? Give them all the beer. That's what they want. They want a beer. Give them what they want, I say. Lee, you're on 710 Talk. Speak to me. What's on your mind? Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to give you kind of two perspectives, parallel. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I know from inside from a, a family member who has been this way for 30 years. 30, 30 years a bum? Well, well uh, uh, he's my brother. Okay. All right. So you don't want to call him a bum. I mean, he blew so many opportunities. Yes. So, you know, got kicked out of the Navy. Yes, he did. Good job. Mm -hmm. Just drink, drink, drink. You know, we bail him out, uh, prop him up. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, let me ask you a question, Lee. Why do you bail him out? Well, I don't do that anymore. Oh, you don't? I had to totally... Uh, You've seen the light. Huh? You've seen the light. Well, I mean, I mean, years and years and years of this, you know, the guy, he, he, uh, he uses you, you know, he'll say anything to uh, get his, uh, weasel his way back in, and of course, you know, you buy him things, and in the hope that this will be the last time, and, you know, it just doesn't work. Doesn't work out, does and it? Then, now and, then, and this is my own flesh and blood. Yeah. Do you feel bad about it? Uh, well, it hurts a lot because, yeah. um, you know, I, I can't do anything for him, yeah. you know, and, and I lecture him, preach to him, yeah. you know, scream at him, cry at him. Does it do you any good at all? No. And then, of course, uh, I see people on the streets uh, quite a quite a lot now. And uh, I live in San Pedro, and uh, my husband uh, lost his job after 24 years. So we went from thirty thousand dollars a year to ten thousand. Are you on the streets? No, no. No, of course you're not on the streets because no, you've got a little bit of pride. He, even at his age, he's pushing fifty. He's pushing fifty, and he's got a job. Am I right? He went. We went right into retraining. Right. To uh, to to be to be um. A baker, mm -hmm. and they because he had a good work record, and he's clean. And cut. he's doing better. You f you feel like he's doing better overall, and he's taking care well, of the family. I mean, we took a big hit. Yeah, of course you took a big I mean, hit. Like, That's life, isn't it? But um, p uh, the employers do not want these kind of people in their businesses. Yeah, Lee, I appreciate your call this afternoon. Now, see, that's that's a yeah, that's a, a question that I have too. Is is I've been in a position where I've lost a job in the past, lost a fifty thousand dollar job. You're making fifty thousand dollars on Monday. On Tuesday, what are you making? You're making squat. You're making nothing. You're making zip. Well, what do you do? Well, yeah, I had a few afternoons where I I literally went to tears. I cried. My son said to me, Dad, the kids laughed at my shoes today. That tore my heart out of my chest, Jerry. I got to tell you. My kid looks at me and says, Dad, the kids laughed at my shoes today. Do you know what I did? I went and made enough money to get him a pair of shoes, and I realized that I'm never going to be in this spot ever again. Never, 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 never. I didn't have a job for the next seven months. I didn't work for the next seven months as far as a regular job was concerned, but I got to tell you, I made my house payment. I made sure there was food on the table. I had a truck payment that I had to make. I had a car payment that I had to make. I made every single one of them. You know what I did? I went bankrupt. But I didn't get out in the streets and beg. 
I worked real hard. It's uh, 50 minutes after 1 o'clock, 1.50, of course, 10 minutes in front of 2. Do we go to break now, Art? Is that the deal? All right, let's do that. Let me tell you about uh, what's coming up uh, in the next uh, couple of hours here, just real quick. Uh, the next topic, um, a couple of things I want to talk about in the next hour. Uh, I've never done any illegal drugs. Do you believe that or do you not? Think about it. Don't call in right yet. Another one I want to talk about, married, single, love it, leave it. We'll talk about that in the next hour. Just some thoughts for you. I'm David Jeremiah. 710 Talk, the new talk station. You're listening to a live, uncensored, on-air audition for talk show host positions on the new 710 Talk. If you like what you hear, call in and contribute to the show. If you don't like what you're hearing, remember, you're listening to an audition. A regular weekday lineup starts next Monday morning. Stay tuned for details here on 710 Talk, the new talk station. Hi, Tom Bodet from Motel 6, pondering the great mysteries of science. Well, no, I'm not going to synthetically replicate DNA molecules or anything like that. Just trying to figure out why some places charge you 75 cents to make a local phone call. To me, that's something science may never figure out. After all, the only thing you're doing is making a phone call. It's not like you're trying to communicate with alien beings or something. Plus, of course, you call that uncle of yours nobody likes to talk about. Well, the point is, a plain old local phone call ought to be free as air. And at Motel 6, they are. And we won't saddle you with motel service charges on the long-distance calls either. All you pay at Motel 6 is one low price for a clean, comfortable room and a good night's sleep to go along with it. No big science mystery there. Well, I'm Tom Bodet for Motel 6, and we'll leave the photon-generating, electrically agitated filament device on for you. That's a uh, light bulb. If you had a choice of what type of ingredients to put in a salad dressing, what would they be? Well, before you make your next salad, take a look at the back of the bottle. Is that what you had in mind? Well, now, pick up a bottle of Louise's Garden Dressings. Have you heard about these dressings yet? Well, you will. Only the freshest natural ingredients. Louise's Garden California Caesar and Balsamic Vinaigrette. Look at their ingredients. You're actually getting what you paid for. A novel thought. And they taste like you made them yourself. Available in Ralph's, Bond's Pavilions, Lucky, Hughes, Alpha Beta, Gelson's Mayfair, Westward Ho, and Bristol Farms. Louise's Garden Dressings give you such honest-to-goodness flavor that you won't believe they came out of a bottle. But you know what? They do. Louise's Garden California Caesar and Balsamic Vinaigrette. Everything they say about them is true. For a free recipe booklet and sense off coupons, call 1 800 990 3111. That's 1 800 990 3111. And now back to our live on air auditions for talk show host positions on the new 710 Talk. Remember, our regular weekday lineup starts this Monday. Join us mornings for the Peter Tilden Show with Tracy Miller. With a morning show like this, who needs Prozac? Then in the afternoon, it's the controversial in-your-face Tom Likas Show. And the only place to hear it is on 710 Talk, the new talk station. 710 Talk, the new talk station. Good afternoon, I'm Jerry Hawkins. Now back to your host. David Jeremiah. It is just uh, about seven minutes now before 2 o'clock at 710 Talk, the new talk station for Southern California. 1-800-4-710-710. Loving your music choice, Art. P, hey, you are amazing. 1-800-4-710-710. That's the phone number. Get on it right now because we are talking about the last time you gave money to a bum. Now, Art has sworn to me, he's the engineer, he's got the dump button right in front of him, that if I use the word homeless, that he will dump me immediately. If I use the word homeless... I, homeless is the... Yeah, exactly. Good. Did you hear the beep sound? Good. If I use that word ever, instead of the word bum, then he's going to bleep me. And he's promised me that, and I, quite frankly, I've promised to cane him <laughs> if the word home threw on the air. Yeah. <laughs> Tina in Palmdale, you're on 710 Talk. Speak to me. Yeah, I was going about the, the homeless. Yeah, talk to me. Yeah, well, everybody that's homeless doesn't want to get money for booze or drugs. There is people out there that actually need help. Like who? Well, I know there's there's some people out there. You can see that they don't want to get booze or drugs. They just, maybe they're hungry. Maybe they need some help. Well, why don't you pull over to the side of the road and pick them up and, and take them over to, the, to, the, uh, to a shelter? Well, I can't do that. Well, why can't you? I have kids. I know. I was there once in my life. You were? Yeah. And how did you get out of it? Uh, somebody helped me. You, did you do it by feeling bad for yourself? No. Well, how I did got you do out it? Work. Huh? I got out and worked. You got out and worked. What did you do? Well, I went out and I looked. Looked for jobs. You looked and did you find one? Yeah. Did you get discouraged? Mm, well, Yes, yeah. of course you got discouraged. Of yeah. course. I've been there. You've been there. But did you stop? 
Well, I mean, I helped some people. I mean, I gave them some money to, help, you know, get something to eat. But my point for you is, honey, you've been there in the past, right? Uh -huh. And you got yourself out of it. I say you can get yourself out of it if you want. You don't have to be a bum right. if you don't want to be a bum. And uh, I think you're backing me up on this. Is that true? Right. All right, fair enough. There's some people out there that, that I guess they would want to be there. I mean, you can see it. Yeah, I could be... who don't want to be there, they are trying. They're going to get out of there, and they're going to work at it. Exactly. Tina, I say that uh, you should volunteer for my uh, Thanksgiving program coming up. Appreciate your call, Tina, by the way, where we're going to stand in downtown L.A., and we're going to pass out beer, because I think the bums want beer. They don't want turkey and trimmings. They don't want stuffing. They don't want potatoes and a little cranberry sauce. They want a nice, tall Miller. That's what they want. Or is it... No, what's the choice? What the... What's the... Would it be Bud? Bud Light would be the choice of the, uh, of the homeless people? No, oh, regular, but you let me say homeless on the air. You've let me say it twice without dumping the dump button. I've said homeless. What? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the guy on the bridge. I've got to tell you a story about this guy on the bridge. Mike, stay on the line because I'm going to get to you in just a second. Uh, have you ever been to Laughlin? you ever gone down there and done a little uh, gamble, a little 21, whatever, down in Laughlin? It's kind of a little different than Vegas because there's a river running through, and there's a guy that stands on the bridge. And he's got a sign. And you drive over the bridge to get over, this, uh, uh, to get over this river, over into the state of Arizona. And one guy stands on the bridge in the morning. And his sign says, Aw, hell, I just want a beer. <laughs> That's what it says. But here's the funny part, okay? You spend the day in Arizona, you're on the way back. There's another guy with the exact same sign. They're working shifts. The sign says, Aw, hell, I want a beer. Guess what? I bought the guy a beer. It's uh, four minutes now before 2 o'clock. <laughs> at 710 Talk, the new talk station. Mike in Costa Mesa, what's up? Hi, David. I hope that you fill the position in between uh, Peter and Tracy and Tom. You're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Everything that. Everything that, that you've talked about, I, I uh, travel the freeway a lot, and I, I'll certainly listen. I do have something.